Hey, Professor. Uh, yes, will it be? Haven't you fixed that Philo Farnsworth film yet? All threaded, will it be? And ready to go. Well, it's about time. Patience, my young assistant, is more important than intelligence. As Albert Einstein himself said, it's not that I'm so smart. It's just that I stay with problems longer. And if you are to become a scientist, such as the one you see before you, or Philo Farnsworth for that matter, you must learn patience. Say, is that why they call them patience? In the waiting room at the doctor's office? Because that's what they have to have? Patience? I, I do not know. Perhaps there's a science o -rama video about it in the future. In the meantime, Willoughby, turn on the projector. Right, Professor. It was his conception of an electronic television system. The teacher studied for a long time and then admitted it was beyond him. He gave the boy the most advanced textbooks on the subject he could think of and he told him to go on with his dreams. Soon after, the Farnsworth family moved to Provo, Utah, and young Farnsworth took some special courses in Brigham Young University. In 1924, at the age of 18, he had fully worked out the concepts of electronic television, essentially as it works today. His father died, and Farnsworth had to put aside his dreams for a while and go to work. He started a small radio shop, and ironically, it failed. He got a job in the railroad yards. At this point, his luck changed, however. He met George Everson and Leslie Gorrell, two California businessmen. They listened to him for a while and agreed to put up $8,000 and see what he could do. Farnsworth was sure his star was set now. He married a childhood sweetheart, Elma Gardner, and the couple moved to Hollywood. Farnsworth turned the living room of his home into a laboratory. At one time, the neighbors got suspicious of the strange young man and the packages he was carrying into his home and the sound of motors operating inside. This was during Prohibition and they were sure he was operating a still. They notified the police, and the place was raided. The inventor, eyes blinking, finally convinced the police no liquor was being manufactured on the premises. Money frequently ran low, and between problems, Farnsworth had to beg his backers for more. In 1927, he had something to show for his work, his first patent, the one on the whole system of electronic television. At one of the early demonstrations, Farnsworth was asked by a banker whether he saw any dollars in that pickup tube yet. Farnsworth answered by televising a dollar sign painted on a sheet of glass. The banker laughed and coughed up more money. Farnsworth gave a demonstration for the press in San Francisco and drew international attention to himself. Three years later, he entered into an agreement with a large radio set manufacturer, under which his research staff and much of his equipment were moved to Philadelphia. At the end of that period, he established his own laboratory there and carried on research until 1939. Then. The plants were moved to Fort Wayne, Indiana. Farnsworth is the father of two boys, Philo Jr., 10, and Russell Seymour, 4. They live near Fort Wayne. Music is the chief interest in their home, and Farnsworth has started to study counterpoint and theory. He is a heavy cigarette smoker and a big-time eater. He is a good shot and a fanatic at auto driving. He races his cars up and down the countryside when stumped at the plant. And that's science or for this time! Wow! We 
finally made it through the whole film. Boy, that Philo Farnsworth sure has inspired me. See you later, Professor. Uh, Willoughby, where are you going? To eat a bologna sandwich, fire off my water pistol, and ride my bike around the block until I can think of an idea. Like Philo Farnsworth. See ya! Oh, bye. Waterlog Productions.